The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. Thank you everyone for staying late to attend my presentation. I'm going to talk about concrete proportioning method for non-standard aggregate. I will take the opportunity to introduce my other co-authors, Mark Rashid and both of our supervisor, David Fowler. I would like to spend some time to discuss why mineral fillers are becoming important <coughs> in concrete industry. First of all, the stringent EPA regulation, which forced the aggregate manufacturer to reduce the waste generation. Second is the shortage of uh, material. For example, in Dallas Fort Worth area, there is no natural river sand sources nearby. So they're forced to use uh, manufactured sand in their, in their concrete. And finally, the push for more sustainable concrete material, where we are pushed to use more industry byproduct in concrete, which will make concrete more economical as well as greener. So with that, I would like to briefly discuss what we are doing for a typical a standard aggregate mixture proportioning. Typically what we do, we choose water to cementitious material ratio based on strength and durability. Secondly, we choose water requirement based on slump and maximum aggregate size. We adjust the water based on the roundness of aggregate. And finally, we choose the coarse aggregate volume based on the maximum aggregate size and fineness modulus of fine aggregate. This ACI 211 method works pretty well for any ASTMC 33 aggregate, but it becomes a problem when the aggregate doesn't meet ASTMC 33 requirement. Our group is involved a couple of years ago in one of the paving projects in Dallas Fort, where they are trying to introduce a manufactured sand, which is typically has poor size, shape, and gradation, as well as high microfine content, and the result was horrible. So they use ACI 211 method without any adjustment for poor size, shape, gradation, and high microfine content. And the workability was very poor. And you can see from the photograph below that it's very difficult for the paper to spread the concrete. And as a second photograph, they're spraying additional water to get an acceptable pavement finish. So from our experience from this project, we try to find out a suitable proportioning method which can be used for non-standard aggregates. In other words, yeah, that is high microfine content or has poor size, shape, and duration. Based on that, we conducted this study in the University of <coughs> Texas at Austin, and our goal was to identify a mixture proportioning technique that will be suitable for non-standard aggregate. Secondly, we just don't want to store whether we want to see whether this mixture proportioning technique can be used for multiple aggregate, let's say five coarse aggregate and five fine aggregate, if you have to blend together, whether you can use this mixture proportioning technique for that or not. And thirdly, we try to find out whether it would be possible to minimize cement use in concrete, but still maintain the physical property that we need. And finally, that we want to achieve all these three objectives without sacrificing the performance of concrete. So to achieve this objective, we selected a mixture proportion technique that was developed in U University of Texas at Austin by Eric Kohler and uh, Dr. Fowler, David Fowler, as a part of uh, International Center for Aggregate Research. And this particular mixture proportion technique was primarily developed for self-consolidating concrete. And recently, it has been published as a take note under ACI 211, which titled Aggregate Suspension Mixture Proportion Method. So if you are not familiar with this mixture proportioning method, I will go over it step by step and take some time to explain how it works. I used an example where I used two coarse aggregate and two fine aggregate to develop a mixture proportion using this particular mixture proportioning technique. The first step is pretty simple. You have to determine the physical property of aggregates, which is the aggregate gradation, specific gravity, and absorption. The graph at the left, which is showing the fineness, like gradation for fine aggregate. And the two black line over here is showing the higher and the lower margin of ASTMC 33 sand gradation requirement. So you can see that this red line, it is ASTMC 33 fine aggregate. But this blue line, which is MS3 manufactured sand, does not meet that requirement, gradation requirement, as well as has high fine content. 
In the right graph, there are two coarse aggregate gradation I'm showing. TA4, which is coarse aggregate 4, it meets ASTM 467 gradation requirement. But CA3 does not meet ASTM gradation requirement. But it meets one of the text dot gradation requirement, which is grade 3. The second and one of the most important step is how we are going to choose the volume fraction of each four aggregates. The way we are going to choose that we will play with the volume fraction and try to achieve the highest packing density. And the way the mixture proportion technique helps to achieve the highest packing density is to follow power 45 curve. So we'll play with the volume fraction and try to achieve the overall gradation of common coarse and fine aggregate and try to fit with the power 45 curve, which is shown in black here. So this black curve is power 45 curve, and the red curve is our common gradation curve. So the better it will fit, the higher packing density we are going to get. Why getting higher packing density is important? If you theoretically think about the mixture proportion technique, like you supposed to fill the voids in between the aggregates to get it concrete. So that is what we are trying to do. We are trying to reduce the void content so that we can reduce the cement requirement. The second thing is how we can calculate the void content in the combined gradation. So now we have volume fraction for each four aggregates. Now we mix all these aggregates and determine the dry rotted unit weight. So from the specific gravity of each aggregate and dry rotted unit weight, we will be able to determine what is the internal void content in this combined gradation. And there is the equation, if you're interested, we can talk about it later. But right now, I'm not going to, into it. And finally, right now, we know the void content. So the first step, this void content would be equivalent to our paste volume content, because that is what I explained that the theoretical paste volume should be. And from now, I'll be calling that void content is the theoretical paste volume requirement for the concrete. And that is our first initial paste volume that we are going to use for concrete mixture design. So we will choose the paste quality, which means what kind of material <coughs> you want to use, percent air, supplementary cementation material, admixture that needs to be added in the concrete. And finally, again, we have to go for trial batching to reduce or increase the paste volume to get the physical property that we need for concrete. This is the material we used. We used STMC 150 type 1 to cement. We use six different sand and five different coarse aggregate. ASTMC 49, a type A water reducing admixture was used, which is low range. And uh, water to cement ratio was kept 0.45 for all the concrete mix. So this two graph shows the gradation for coarse and fine aggregate. The left graph shows the coarse aggregate gradation, and the right graph shows the fine aggregate gradation. Over here, if you look at coarse aggregate 1, which is CA1, coarse aggregate 2, and coarse aggregate 5, they all meet ASTM 57 gradation. Coarse aggregate 4 meet ASTM 467 gradation, but coarse aggregate 3, it doesn't meet any of the ASTM gradation, but it meets a text dot grade 3 gradation, which is a different from ASTM C33. In fine aggregate side, first I would like to draw your attention about these two black lines. So these two lines actually showing the upper and lower range of ASTM C33 sand gradation requirement. We use six sand, R is represent for river sand, so there are two river sand and a one a manufacturer sand, which is manufacturer sand for MS4. It meets ASTM C33 gradation as well as fine content requirement. But manufacturer sand one, manufacturer sand two, and manufacturer sand three, that doesn't meet ASTM C33 requirement. There are two requirements in ASTM C33, one is gradation and the other is microfine content. For manufacturers and one and manufacturers and three, they have both high microfine content, and manufacturers and two doesn't meet the gradation. And on top of that, fine aggregate that we have used, manufacturers and two has the poorest size and shape and texture. It was really hard to work with. So this table represents the mineralogy of the aggregate that we used and some physical property. So the fine aggregate two river gravels at the top, which meets the STMC 33 requirement. Manufacture stand one and manufacture stand three, which are made of limestone, and that is why they have high microfine content. So typically, depending on the use, STMC 33 allows you to use a maximum microfine content of five to seven percent, based on what is the use of the concrete. Manufacture stand two is from slate. So if you're familiar with aggregate and if you know slate, you know that when you start to break slate, it breaks as a plate. 
so it is a small spin plate and it has the worst shape and texture within all the six finite games. And the final one is MS4, which is Dolomite. And we have five coarse <coughs> aggregates, which are all priced, uh, crushed limestone. And all of these aggregates are actually collected from Dallas Fort Worth area, around Dallas Fort Worth area, because that is our target area, as they do not have locally available natural sand. So this is our test matrix. We had a total 11 concrete mix. I'll just uh, like to draw attention on the bottom row, which is probably the most complex mix that we have used. So mix 11, if you look at this column, so this is 80% volume fraction of course aggregate 4, 50% volume fraction of course aggregate 5, 20% volume fraction of course reverse and 2, and 12% volume fraction of manufacturers and 3. And how we determine this volume fraction, we use the step 2 to get the highest packing density. We play with the volume fraction and we see which one gives us the best highest packing density. And from the dry rotted unit weight, we achieved that 25.7% of white content. And this is our theoretical paste volume. And if you look at this column over here, you can see the theoretical paste volume for all these concrete mix. In this study, we tested workability and 28 day compressive strength because these are the two requirements that TechDot has in their specification. Typically, in a paving job, our target uh, slump is around one to one and a half percent, that is the optimum. So our target was to achieve slump more than one inch. For eight concrete mix out of 11, we were able to achieve that. Let me just explain you what is going here. This graph is showing the slump value, which is shown in the left vertical axis and shown in blue. And the right vertical axis is showing <coughs> the water using <coughs> admixture dose normalized to maximum dose. So what it means, let's say I have a 0.5 water reducing admixture dose normalized to maximum dose. It means that I use the water reducing admixture half of the maximum dose. So if my maximum dose is let's say 10 fluid ounce per 100 pound, I use 5 fluid ounce per 100 pound. And the red lines are showing this water reducing admixture dose here. Eight out of 11 mixtures that we have, we were able to achieve at least one inch slump. Now, if I have higher slump, what I can do, I can reduce the water reducing admixture, or I can reduce the cement paste content to get a lower slump. But for mix two, mix four, and mix eight, our slump was less than one inch. But if you see mix two and mix eight, and look at the red bars here, so for mix two, our normalized water reducing admixture is like, we use almost about 70%. So we have a chance to increase bump up the water reducing admixture dose. For both mix two and mix eight, there is a chance that if we increase the water reducing admixture dose, we will be able to achieve one inch or higher slump. But if you look at mix four, where we used the maximum water reducing admixture, one, like we used the maximum dose, but still we are not able to achieve the required slump that we need. I just want to go back to the previous slide to show you what mix four was. So if you look at mix four, mix four is composed of manufacturers and three which has the highest microfine content, about 22%. And it's pretty clear that when you have high microfine content, it's going to increase your water demand, and that will have an adverse effect on your workability. This graph is showing the 28-day compressive strength for all 11 concrete mix that we have in our study. The left vertical axis is showing the strength in PSI, which is shown in purple. And the right vertical axis is showing the modulus of elasticity in 28 days. Both are in 28 days, and these are in million PSI. And this is shown by red. For textile class P concrete, they have a requirement of 4,400 PSI in 28 days. But in our case, we were able to achieve something from 6,300 to 7,500 PSI, which is well above the requirement that textile has in their specification. Secondly, the modulus of elasticity varies from 3.5 to 4.5 million PSI. But I would like to draw your attention on mix 3 and mix 8 over here, which has the lowest modulus of elasticity. One of the reasons might be, we are not clear why it is happening, but we have a hypothesis that probably that might be the reason. So both these mix are composed of uh, micro sand, which has slate. 
and that has the poorest shape and texture. What we feel like as the sand has poorest shape and texture, it probably weakens the interfacial transition zone, and probably that might be the reason we are getting higher deformation when we are putting load on it, and that is why probably we are getting low modulus of elasticity. Then uh, we try to do a raw comparison between the ACI 211 method and the method that we studied. We choose the concrete mix that has both coarse and fine aggregate that meets ASTM C30 requirement. Except mix 5 and mix 7, we have manufacturers and 2, which just miss the ACI 333 requirement due to a little bit higher fine content. And we have two red bars over here, which is showing the cement requirement for 5,000 PSI concrete and 6,000 PSI concrete. So if we compare our cement requirement with the 5,000 PSI concrete, and we'll be able to conclude that we can save up to 30 to 90 pounds per <coughs> cubic yard of concrete. A cubic yard of concrete. And if we compare with 6,000 PSI concrete, we can reduce the cement use by 90 to 150 pounds per cubic year. But again, it's a, it's a raw comparison. We didn't prepare any cylinder for 5,000 or 6,000 PSI. It's just from calculation. Next, uh, we try to see what if, if we just reduce or increase the base fund and how it affects the work with the DR spray. Let me explain this graph for you. So it actually represents the relationship between the paste volume with the workability of slum. So this zero line is basically the mixed proportion that we used by using the optimum paste volume that we determined from the void content. So if we move from right to left, basically what we are doing, we are reducing the paste volume. And when we are reducing the paste volume to keep up with the workability, we also increase the water reducing admixture dose. But even though if we go from right to left, we weren't able to keep the workability in the same level. It decreased with the decreased paste volume. The strength result is a little bit interesting. Though we are reducing the paste volume from, if we go from right to left, and this is the theoretical paste volume line over here, just this 0%. If you look at the left, the significant drop is mix 3, mix 5, and mix 8. These are the significant drop in strength when we are reducing the paste volume. Even though if you can look at uh, mix 10 as well as mix 9 over here, there is a difference of like 500 PSI, which can be well within the error of the test method that we have. Except these three mix, we have eight mix where we didn't see significant strength drop when we are reducing the cement content. But more exciting things in the right side, mix 6 and mix 7 here, even though we are increasing the paste volume, it's not sure why we are losing the strength. And this cannot be really explained. We don't know how to explain it. We think the studied mix proportioning technique can be used for non-standard aggregate. We can use multiple aggregate in a same concrete mix. This mix proportioning technique has the potential to reduce cement content. And this is a really easy method to follow. I'd like to acknowledge the Texas Department of Transportation, uh, Construction Material Research Group in the University of Texas, David Whitney and Michael Brown.